Hey Techno Studs, let's take a look at fiber optics and how it transmits data. We're going to start out by talking about how fiber transmits data. Then we're going to talk about advantages, disadvantages, and use cases of fiber and where we would want to use this. And then we'll talk about different types of fiber optics and different types of cables. And then we'll get into the connectors and we'll finish it off by talking about a few concepts with multiplexing. Similar to some sort of conductor that conducts electricity, where we can turn it on and off and send data down a line, we can do the same thing with light. We can turn a light on and off to represent different information. You know, in the very crude sense, we could have a flashlight that sends data with some sort of sensor that picks up that 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 light information and turns it into some sort of data. Now, the problem is, is that a flashlight really disperses the data. So we need to somehow focus it. That's where lasers come in, where a laser is a focused light. And so it will travel much longer distances. And so there's different ways that we can create this laser light. But then the other issue is how do we go around corners and how do we, how do we get the data to where past walls and to other areas? And so that's where fiber optics comes in. Fiber optics allows us to route the light in certain directions. What it does is it uses some physics principles of how light as it travels through transparent but more dense material, it'll actually do some refraction of that material. It's similar concept that when you look at a glass of water, how it will bend the light, it uses some of those same characteristics. So this is a fiber optics cable that I have right here. And you see in the middle of it, I have a material that's transparent but dense and so that would be a, it would be either glass or some sort of plastic that we have running through there uh, the higher end ones are actually glass because it has less attenuation it will disrupt that that uh, that fiber light less than plastic ha is, tends to be a little more cloudy and will interrupt that light a little more so that light gets refracted and bounced off as it goes down this this uh, this really fine piece of fiber or this fiber glass now the thing is is that it's very breakable this piece of fiber can be very if you bend it too much it can actually break because it's actually glass inside of it or even if it's plastic then the plastic can break also so it's fragile so it has multiple uh, sheathings around the outside to protect it so you to try not to bend it too much and when you handle it you still have to be somewhat careful with it and if you have any kind of connection issue it could be because the the piece of glass is broke but we can now take this and we can shine a laser in one side and it will refract off the the edges and um, bounce around in there and bounce out the other side and then read that light whether it's on or off and really uh, we can get really fast connection speeds because that light is is really quick it, it actually uh, turns on and off at the speed of light right so we can we continually improve and make uh, fiber optics go faster and faster So there's a lot of advantages over fiber optics over some other choices. So first of all, similar to a copper line, it is a direct connection from one point to another. And because of that, because it's not wireless, it tends to be more stable. Once you make that connection, and as long as there's no breaks in the line, it tends to be a very stable connection. It's, what makes it better than copper is that it's less susceptible to attenuation. So where copper, uh, as it over time, it adds resistance to it, then the signal degrades. The same or similar effect happens with fiber optics is that light will degrade over time as it, as it hits this material or goes through this material. However, it's less susceptible to that attenuation. So it can go longer distance. So the really the one of the powerful things is with this it can go longer distances in fact actually sometimes we think of uh, fiber optics we relate fiber optics to speed which isn't really fiber optics is really not faster than copper because uh, sitting on both sides is electro pulse electrical pulses it's just we can go longer distances without that attenuation and so we can achieve higher speeds at longer distances and that's why we are we we think of fiber as being a really fast uh, media 
The other thing that it has a step up above copper is, is that it's not susceptible to electromagnetic interference at all. It's light. And so it is, uh, it doesn't get interfered by all of these EMI or EMF around. There's, it, it doesn't have crosstalk. And so it's very stable from that perspective. So it's a step above copper in many ways. However, there are some disadvantages, otherwise we'd be using it everywhere, and the main disadvantage is just expense. Uh, it, can be kinda, it can be costly because the fiber is expensive to make, and it's really fragile, so you have to protect it. So, uh, and it also can be more difficult to actually installing it because uh, there's tighter um, constraints with it on how far it can bend. So you, uh, it, it, there are some disadvantages to fiber optics as well. Now, we typically don't see a lot of companies that are installing fiber to the desktop. There is not a strong use case for that because of the expense of it. So where do we use fiber? Well, we use fiber. Uh, there's a lot of times we'll use fiber to go that last mile to the home. So there's the fiber to the home or FTTH. We've got the long haul networks that uh, set up those long haul networks or over the, um, the ocean floor. Uh, there's some areas like that that we like to have this fast speed and longer distances. So those long hauls. But within our lands, we like to use them as well. And so there's a couple places that we really like to use fiber. One is between our switches. So you see that this switch right here has regular uh, ethernet ports on it that are copper based. It's got those uh, connectors in it where you slide in those SFPs into there. And so you slide those in there and then these are the fiber connections and the fiber connections then can make the link between the switches. And then quite often then those come back to a main switch that all connects all of the switches together. So this would be uh, very similar to uh, a lot of people will use as the core switch and then you have fiber that's running um, from the from the core out to all of the individual access switches. So there's definitely use cases for the uh, using fiber and you'll definitely see it in a lot of networks out there. All right, let's talk about multi-mode versus single mode. So here I've got an example of a multi-mode uh, fiber optics cable and a single mode. So I've, Multi-mode is 50 microns thick. That's the diameter of that fiber inside of the cable. And the single mode is nine microns. So quite a bit smaller and functionally it's quite a bit different. Just as an example of that, the human hair is 70 microns. So we're talking about pretty small here. Uh, these are really small connectors, but the difference between uh, the 50 microns and the nine microns produces a fairly large result. And that is, is when, when, uh, the when light is transmitted through the single mode it bounces back and forth through this and then comes out the other side and so the result of that is that you get a little more attenuation with that versus the nine micron allows it to be, take a much straighter path through this uh, piece of fiber and it doesn't bounce around in there like it does with the uh, the multi-mode, therefore it takes a much more direct path, has less attenuation, can go longer distances, and, uh, and so you're, you're able to get a much clearer signal through it. So that's the difference between multi-mode and single mode. And a lot of uh, places find that multi-mode uh, works just fine. And we see single mode, once again, as technology develops, we can, uh, we can, you know, things become cheaper and the expense ratio between these two are probably not as big as it used to be. So we may see some transitions, uh, but you'll see these type of multi-mode and single mode can, uh, fiber optics out there. All right, there are a lot of different type of connectors for fiber optics. We're just gonna cover a few of the more common ones. So as you can see here, we've got the uh, LC connector right here. This is the Lucent connector or LC. We've got the 
straight tip connector or ST, and then we got the SC connector or the subscriber connector. I've got the most experience with this and seen most of uh, most of the equipment that I've worked with out in the field. You'll also see a simplex versus duplex. The simplex just is one K, uh, one of these connectors to connect in, and the duplex is two of those connectors. So uh, so yeah, so those are the different type of connectors that you'll see out there. Connectors are tricky because as they come together, they have to come together exactly. So the, it's it's got to be a precise where it comes together. If it's off at all, that connectivity is not going to work right. And so you have to bring them together exactly right. The tolerances of this is even more so than like our Ethernet copper con connectors. So uh, so if you've got two connectors that are coming together, and um, let's say this is one line connecting to another line we've got the outer jacket here that can't be off and so we got a couple different ways that we can do that this is called a UPC or a ultra physical contact and then we also have a slanted one as well that will come together at a slant and this is uh, called a angled physical contact. So we got a different type of ways, even how those contact. But the big key here is once again, they have to come up exactly right. So it's not as common for you. There's a lot of people that will do their own ethernet copper cables and put on RJ45s on the ends of their cables, but you really don't see as many people making their own fiber connectors because it's a very, it's a very precise. It's gotta be very accurate in how those cables come together. All right, in a prior video, we talked about a MUX. A MUX is a multiplexer. We have a multiplexer and a demultiplexer. A multiplexer will take in several channels on one side, put it across the media, and then break it back down on the other side into several channels. So that's a multiplexer or a, M a MUX slash DMUX. We can do the same thing with light. We can do division multiplexing with different wavelengths. So there is a wavelength division multiplexer, and we're gonna talk about different ways that we can do that, but essentially we can shine different lights into one side of this and then break it back out on the other side. Similar to if you have two lights that are across each other, they don't interfere with each other. And as long as we can break them out on the other end, then we can successfully determine the signaling on the other end. So one example of this is bidirectional wavelength division multiplexing or BWDM. So in this case, we can shine a, we can have a laser pointing in this way and the fiber optics routes it in that direction, but we can also go the other direction as well. So there's nothing that's colliding in the middle or going to interfere in the middle. They just pass through each other. We just need a, a, a receiver and a transmitter both on each side. And then we've got by direct, by directional wavelength division multiplexing. Another way that we can do this is we can shoot different wavelengths in one side, combine them, and as long as we can separate them out on the other side, then we can do the same thing with this division multiplexing. So here's an example of I've shined different colors down here so blue yellow green red and i've then i can separate that back out with maybe some sort of prism on the other side and then be able to uh, interpret the data on the other side so this is a way to use fiber optics to get those four different colors on, uh, through here and onto the other side we call this coarse wavelength division multiplexing now coarse wavelength because there is a dense wavelength as well Dense wavelength division multiplexing is essentially the same thing as coarse wavelength division multiplexing, but the difference between coarse and dense is coarse is we're taking a wide range uh, of a, that has a lot of degree of separation between those wavelengths and we're shining it in one side versus dense wavelength is our colors can be and our wavelengths can be much tighter. So there's much more dense. So we actually have much more options and can fit much more down the this, uh, this pipeline down this fiber optics line. And so dense wavelength, just think as uh, we're taking much smaller spectrums of wavelengths and we're shining it down this, uh, this uh, fiber optics. 
So just like a really quick overview between coarse and dense is coarse has fewer channels. We, uh, because we're taking much bigger spectrums here, then we only have four or eight, or possibly we could fit 16 different channels into there versus the dense wave, we have more like 40 or 80 channels, or possibly we could fit 160 channels down the dense wave. And then the, so the coarse uh, wavelengths is, it's a little cheaper to implement and you don't need as, as powerful of equipment to operate. And so typically we'll see that with shorter distances, but with this uh, dense wave, we want to capitalize on these lines that are going these long distances. So to do that, we'll want to use dense wavelengths. So we tend to see uh, the dense wavelengths uh, division multiplexing using being used on those longer distances. All right, so fiber optics, we talked about how fiber transmits data. And because of it's the technology that we're using to do that, it has specific advantages and disadvantages. It is much more finicky with the cable and, it, and the cable can break much easier. However, we can go longer distances because we don't have attenuation or as much attenuation and we don't have to deal with, uh, with um, electromagnetic fields and, uh, and, and interferences like that. Uh, we also talked about types and connectors with these different cables that we have. And we talked about multiplexing, a way to get multiple signals down one fiber optics line. Hope this video is helping you out. Can you help me out by hitting that like button? 